the number one cause of a squeaky sound. Let's talk about something that causes a lot of grief for beginning cellists and beginning string players too, which is a squeaky nasal sound that seems to have no rhyme or reason to it. The number one culprit is the A string, which is our highest string, and is all the way on the left of the instrument when you're holding it. Oh my gosh, I just realized I never told people that the cello goes to the left of their face. A lot of people sit down with an instrument and are discouraged right away by how easily this really abrasive sound can happen. I wanted to share one of my big technical support beams early on to both start you off on the right foot for a great sound and to show you that there's a technical solution to every problem that you encounter on the cello. In order to explain what causes a squeaky sound, first we need to know how strings move under a bow. Let's take a look at a quick video that zooms in on how strings move under the bow. The instrument in this video is a violin, but it works exactly the same way with a cello. The bridge supports the strings. The hair of the bow creates friction that initiates the movement of the string in the direction the bow is traveling, creating a wave that travels up and down the string. To me, it looks like a jump rope moving side to side, and the two points of contact are the nut up at the top and the bridge down at the bottom. The bow pulls the string perpendicular or at a right angle to those two points of contact. The top of the bridge is curved so that each side slopes down. That's so you can play each string individually without hitting the others. But that curve changes the exact spot that this string lands and is supported by the bridge, which means it changes the angle that your bow has to travel in order to stay parallel to the bridge. Let's zoom in on that bridge, which is the carved piece of wood that holds up the strings. I'll put my bow on the middle two strings, which are G and D, at parallel to the bridge. So far so good, right? Now I'll move to the C string with that same exact angle. Suddenly my bow doesn't line up parallel with the bridge. If you extend the lines of my bow and the bridge in space, they'll eventually cross, which is how you know they're not parallel. To match the curve of the bridge, I have to pull my hand up and closer to me, which means I'm pushing the far side of my bow out and away from me. Now my bow is perfectly in alignment with the bridge. The same thing happens on the A string, so let's check that out too. I'll start with my bow on the middle strings, G and D, one more time, and I'll move to the A string with that same angle. We have a similar problem, except the angle is flipped. To get to parallel to the bridge, I have to push my hand out and away from my body, which pulls the far end of the bow closer to me. Now my bow is perfectly aligned with the bridge at the A string, our highest string. So why do we care about all this bow angle geometry? Let's find out by putting these angles to the test. First, let's try that G or D angle on the C string and hear what happens. Not too bad, but if you pay close attention, you'll notice that the bow is actually traveling away from the bridge as I play. That means that my sound won't be as consistent as I want it to be. Now let's do the adjustment I was talking about before. For the C string, I'll bring my hand closer to me and I'll push the tip of the bow farther away. To me, it sounds much fuller and richer and the bow isn't moving with a mind of its own up or down on the string. Now let's try the A string. Let's try using a G or D angle on the A string. It sounds a little fluffy, it's not consistent, and my bow travels downwards because it's not parallel to the bridge. Now it's time for the infamous angle that gives the cello and a lot of other instruments a bad name, which is if you use a C string angle on the A string. Ear trigger warning in action. Okay, let's adjust to the angle that I was talking about before by pushing out our hand which brings the far end of the bow closer to your body. That sound is much smoother, cleaner, and the bow isn't traveling up or down on the string. What that means is you have to adjust across every string when you're playing the cello. Whenever you change strings from A to D to G to C, your bow should also be adjusting to the difference in the curve of the bridge. It really makes you think differently about pieces like this.
time, and that's why bow angle is the number one cause of a squeaky sound. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to one of the foundations of our technique, and I'll see you in the next lecture.